Ladies and gentlemen, um, and thank you very much indeed for um, inviting me to come along today because actually what we're discussing this evening um, corresponds very closely to two of my um, big priorities. Um, I'm, as well as being culture secretary, I'm also <coughs> Minister for Digital Technology and um, actually a good announcement for culture and a good announcement for digital technology, which I want to talk about in a minute. Um, but um, just looking at the House of Commons this afternoon and the scenes that we have very characteristic of our um, wonderful British democracy uh, reminded me of the arguments between the doctor, the engineer, and the politician as to which was the most vital for the future of humanity. And the doctor said, well, we are obviously the most important because without us, how could mankind have survived all these generations? To which the engineer said, oh yes, but without us engineers, who would have created order out of the chaos? To which the politician smiled and said, oh yes, but who created the chaos? <laughs> and I think this afternoon was really an argument about who created the chaos. Um, and it went as far as you uh, well, I don't think the answer to that question is, um, but um, that's not really the topic of discussion this evening. Um, I really want to um, sort of talk about a couple of things. I want to talk about how thinking about philanthropy is an opportunity for cultural organisations to turn potentially um, one of the biggest funding crises in the last half century uh, into one of the biggest opportunities. And I also want to talk about what I think the two key trends are that are going to dominate the evolution of the internet over the next decade. Um, but before I do that, I want to say a very, very big thank you to Jeff and the team at Nesta for hosting us today. I think Nesta is a fantastic organisation. It is, uh, as Jeff knows, having worked on the inside of government, it is incredibly difficult when you're surrounded by uh, red boxes and daily clashes of the media to think out of the box. And I think Nestor is a fantastic force for innovation and for reaching for the stars and for ripping up the rule book. And I think that's a really, really important role that it um, has been played in the past and continues to play. And so it's absolutely appropriate that you are um, helping us think about this particular issue. I also want to thank William for um, the work that he has done with his team on what I think is a really excellent report. And I think thinking about uh, the role of um, uh, digital fundraising in the philanthropy agenda is the next big thing. I think uh, there's a lot of uh, flashing out that needs to happen between the excitement of seeing that President Obama was able to raise $50 million in his presidential campaign from uh, $20 donations to actually how we make that apply to a sustained, coherent fundraising strategy here in the UK. And I think William's report, the Panelogic report, is the first step in doing that. And no one else has done it, and I do think it's incredibly useful and helpful that you've done that. Um, let me just start very briefly by um, saying why I think philanthropy is very, very important for cultural organisations. I'm delighted to see so many people here um, from the cultural sector. Um, the lesson to me of the spending cuts that we've been through in the last uh, year is really um, not that um, we don't want to have strong government public support for the arts. I think what makes the arts and culture incredibly vibrant in this country is that we have had strong, sustained public support over very many years. And this government, and certainly me, has absolutely no agenda to move to a kind of uh, you know, public good public bad, private good model where all the funding comes from the private sector. We think you look at an institution like the BBC, which is incredibly important to us culturally as a country, um, that has thrived on the stability of long-term public support. And I think that we want that absolutely to continue. Of course, we have to play our part in um, helping to tackle the deficit. But um, what I think the real lesson of the last uh, year is, is how important it is to diversify your sources of support and to avoid being over-dependent on any one source. And um, what I think we have achieved for the cultural sector is in a very difficult time a relatively soft landing. But I think what we have to do, the, the opportunity from this, is to say how can we make sure, we can't be sure that politicians are not going to screw things up again at some stage in the future. So what can we do now? 
to make sure that our organisations are as resilient as possible, so that if those guys in Westminster do mess up again, obviously wouldn't happen under this government, but if they do mess up anywhere at all, uh, then we are better prepared. And so this is really about financial resilience. And I have to say, I think the cultural sector has responded magnificently to that challenge, and that's why there is such a big engagement in the philanthropy agenda. I need to say something else, though, which is that I think philanthropy is incredibly important for us as a society, because one of the, one of the things that the financial crisis has brought into sharp relief has been the irresponsibility of some people at the <coughs> society, particularly some people on absolutely huge salaries. And um, I am a capitalist. I think that capitalism is the best uh, system that mankind has created to um, create opportunities for all of us um, to do all the things that we think are important in a society. But we also need to have a united society. And encouraging people who have been successful, who have made money, to put something back is, I think, a very, very important element in a, um, in a successful, united, modern capitalist society. So I think philanthropy is a very, very important thing for people who have been successful to think about. And, um, and I also think when you talk to philanthropists, and we have a great number in this country, they will also tell you it is one of life's great pleasures and great privileges to support an organisation, a charity, a cultural body that you really believe in as well. So um, I think it's very important from both ends. Um, now what we have tried to do um, what I've tried to do in the last 18 months is as many things as I can to try and boost culture and philanthropy. And there isn't obviously a lot of money available at the moment, but um, in particular what I've tried to do, first of all, is to talk about it as much as possible, to give as much recognition to uh, philanthropists for what they do. Um, when you look at uh, the most successful society in terms of philanthropy, it's without question the United States. And they are very, very good at recognizing their donors. And so um, we've been looking at things like the honor system um, to see how uh, it could be rather better at recognizing philanthropy. Uh, the very irony is in this country that the honor system has unintentionally often been a disincentive to philanthropy because um, if your social status is attached to being in the Queen's birthday honours, um, then you have less reason to give money than you might in the United States, where your social status would be connected to having your name in lights of Carnegie Hall or um, inside the Hall of a great cultural organisation. And we need to try and deal with that disconnect. I also think it's very important to recognise the role that large companies play. Currently, 37% of FTSE 100 companies have a sustained relationship with a cultural organisation. And um, I think that's, that's good, but times are very tough now, and we need to um, say publicly how grateful we are for that kind of support, because it really does matter. Um, we've had a couple of measures from Chancellor of the Exchequer, who is a big supporter of the arts. Um, one of them that I think could be transformational is, is changes to inheritance tax, which give a 10% discount in inheritance tax for anyone who leaves 10% or more of their will to a charitable or cultural organisation. Now, um, so effectively your marginal rate of inheritance tax goes down from 40 to 36 percent. That gives us probably um, the most general, generous marginal inheritance tax rate in the world uh, in terms of incentives for philanthropy. And as a result of that, uh, someone called Roland Rudd, who a number of you will know, has launched a major campaign called Lexington which is designed to get as many people as possible to leave a legacy in their will. And um, in particular, looking at the southeast of England, where there are a lot of people who are uh, living in valuable properties but may not have much money in their bank. Um, for those kinds of people who are sort of um, asset rich but cash poor, um, this is a very big opportunity. Um, and as I sometimes say slightly flippantly, uh, we mustn't forget that 1% of the population die every year. That is, in its own way, a business opportunity for cultural organisations. <laughs> so um, let's think about uh, legacies and what we can do. And the best example of this, actually, um, is the National Trust, who get a huge amount of income from legacies every year. And um, so we're going to be hosting a conference uh, 
and you will ask uh, Simon Jacobs from the National Trust to talk about how they go about that. 